Is gun control a good thing or a bad thing? What is the Catholic Church's position on gun control? Why are your tights so tight? These are excellent questions and also very valid concerns. Hello everyone, I'm Captain Catholic, and I hope I'm able to address these important questions of yours. I've flown in from Scranton all the way here to the Vatican as the Pope has wanted to meet with me about a few things in particular. But anyway, let's get to the issue. Gun control is a very heated issue. Heated, get it? Like packing heat! <laughs> that was so lame! Yes, well, I believe that gun control is a good thing. The Catholic Church has restricted gun control for many reasons. In fact, the Vatican has stated that it is urgent to find an effective way to stop the flow of arms to terrorist and criminal groups. An indispensable measure would be for each state to impose a strict control on the sale of handguns and small arms. Limiting the purchase of such arms would certainly not infringe upon the rights of anyone. And when talking about handguns and other small arms, Pope John Paul II has stated that governments must adopt appropriate measures for controlling the production, sale, importation, and exportation of these instruments of death. Instruments of death? Those are some pretty strong words. They are strong words. That's because gun control is a life and death issue for millions of people around the globe. So why is strict gun control a good thing? Well, let's go over a few statistics. In the United States, over 100,000 people are shot each year in murders, assaults, suicides, accidents, or by police intervention. Out of these victims, over 31,000 people die from gun violence every year in the United States. Wow, those are some high numbers! They sure are. To break it down, this means that 268 people are shot every day in the United States. Out of these, 86 people die from gun violence every day in America. Oh, man! Oh, man! I know. Pretty mind-boggling. Oh, man, I think my mind is boggled. So why is there so much gun violence in the United States? Because the gun laws in the United States are so insanely loose that virtually anyone can obtain a gun. How is that possible, Captain? This is possible for many reasons, but perhaps the most outrageous example is the gun show loophole. Gun shows are exhibitions that take place around the United States in hotels, malls, or other public buildings where anyone can go to purchase guns. Hey, that sounds like fun! Well, gun shows are especially fun for criminals, murderers, and terrorists. You see, buying a gun at a gun show is very different from buying a gun at a gun store. Gun stores are federally licensed to sell guns, and they are therefore required to perform a background check on anyone who wants to buy a gun from their store. This is a good thing, because it helps to ensure that criminals and people with psychological illnesses do not obtain guns. However, only about half of the people selling guns at gun shows are federally licensed sellers. This means that about half of the people selling guns at gun shows do not have to perform background checks. Okay, and what does that mean? It means that anyone can go to a gun show and purchase a gun. People with outstanding felony warrants, criminals, and terrorists can all go to a gun show and purchase a gun legally. Well, no wonder it's so easy for criminals to get guns. But how many guns are actually sold in the U.S. without performing background checks? It's estimated that at least 40% of guns in the U.S. are sold in the secondary market, meaning that at least 40% of gun sales in the U.S. take place without performing a background check. That's pretty scary. How can we stop that? It's simple. The government should make it illegal for anyone in the U.S. to sell a gun to another person without performing a background check. Well, I guess that is pretty simple, even for a simple bodiless voice like me. But if it's that simple, why hasn't it already happened yet? Because gun lobbyists and certain radical gun activists fight any kind of gun control laws to the death. In fact, some of them would rather make it easier for criminals to obtain guns than to enact even the most simple gun control law. That's pretty crazy. I mean, crazy! It is crazy. So clearly, gun control laws affecting the selling of guns need to be made much stricter. But gun shows are not the only place where criminals obtain guns from. The point is that nearly every gun that is in the hands of criminals originally came from a legal source. What does that mean? Well, think about it. How many criminals do you think make their own guns from scratch? Virtually none. Nearly every criminal owns a gun that was made legally. It's very simple. Guns are initially made by manufacturers, such as Smith & Wesson. After the guns are made, they're usually sent to distributors. The distributors then ship the guns to gun stores, which are legally licensed to sell guns. What do you think happens next? 
I don't know. I'm supposed to be the one asking questions. Well, once guns are shipped to gun stores, all that's left is for private citizens to walk in and buy a gun. But how do we know where this gun is going? Stop asking me questions! All right. So here's how criminals obtain guns. The first way is they simply go into a gun store and buy a gun. End of story. If someone who has no previous criminal record plans on murdering someone else simply because they hate their guts, they can just walk into a store and buy a gun without a hassle. Very easy. Now they're free to go blow off anybody's head that they want. The second way for criminals to obtain guns is to get a buyer. In other words, if someone who has a criminal record wishes to obtain a gun from a gun store but can't because they have a criminal record, all that person has to do is find someone who does not have a criminal record to walk into a gun store and buy a gun for them. Simple. Now your local ex-con has a new gun in his possession. The third way for criminals to obtain a gun is from the black market. That's right, the black market! Sounds like we'll never be able to solve the gun problem since there will always be a black market. That's not true at all. Why do you think a black market even exists? Oh my gosh! Stop asking me all these freaking questions! The black market was supplied with guns that were made legally. What do you mean? The black market exists simply because guns are legal. Alright, here's how guns get put on the black market. A U.S. citizen looking to make money buys multiple guns from a gun store or a gun show. After buying the guns, he either sells them to people he knows are criminals or likely suspects are criminals. But the citizen doesn't care because he just wants to make money and he knows that he can make a lot of money by selling guns on the black market. Once the criminal gets their hands on the gun, they either use it in crime themselves or they turn around and sell it to other criminals to make a profit for themselves. But what about the market? You know, the store that all the criminals go to called the Black Market? Someone told me it's usually right next to the local grocery store. The Black Market isn't a single place or a single store. It's just a term for the buying and trading of goods outside the formal legal marketplace. Ha! So when people say that guns are put on the Black Market, they're simply just saying that guns are being bought and traded among criminals. This could happen on a street corner, in an alleyway, or even in someone's private home. So the only reason the black market exists in the U.S. is because we allow private citizens to own guns. Essentially, any citizen who owns a gun can easily sell it to criminals for a profit without much trouble. So if guns are always legal in the United States, there will always be guns to supply the criminal's black market. So then what's the best way to keep criminals from getting guns? The best way to keep criminals from getting guns is to enforce very strict gun control policies over time, and then to eventually ban all guns from society entirely. Ban all guns from society entirely? Well, after enforcing strict gun control policies over time, we should make it illegal for private citizens to own guns in their homes. The only people who should legally own and use guns are police officers, security officers, and military personnel. It would also be acceptable for private citizens to have guns locked away securely in gun clubs or shooting ranges for those who wish to engage in hunting or other gun-related recreational purposes. You want to ban guns from the homes of private citizens? Your tights must be on too tight again! Your precious Catholic Church doesn't promote banning guns from private citizens, does it? Actually, the position of the Catholic Church does involve the eventual banning of guns from private citizens. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops has stated, We call for effective and courageous action to control handguns, leading to their eventual elimination from society. Of course, reasonable exceptions ought to be made for the police, military, security guards, and pistol clubs where guns would be kept on the premises under secure conditions. But, but you can't ban my guns! I love guns! I love them! Not only should we eventually ban handguns from private citizens, but we should eventually ban all guns, including small arms and light weapons from private citizens. The Vatican has stated that there is an urgent need to work locally, nationally, regionally, and globally to eradicate small arms and light weapons. This is absurd! The Vatican has lost its mind! I'm gonna lose my mind! Ah! Guns. Calm down, calm down, and let me explain. So why does the Catholic Church promote such strict gun control policies? Nobody else seems to. Actually, many countries who are members of the United Nations are working to promote strict gun control as well. The Vatican is only simply one of these many nations. The First Committee on Disarmament and International Security of the United Nations meets every year to discuss their ultimate objective, which is general and complete disarmament of all nations. In fact, there is a statue of a gun with its barrel twisted into a knot outside of the United Nations headquarters in New York City. Alright, alright. So why do you think eventually banning guns from private citizens would help eliminate gun violence? What if a criminal breaks into my house and tries to rob me? I need a gun to protect my family in case someone breaks into my house. Actually, statistics show that having a gun in your home increases the chances of being shot during an assault. What? It's true. 
A recent study found that people in possession of a gun are 4.5 times as likely to be shot during an assault. How is that possible? If somebody breaks into my house with a gun and tries to rob me, I would be able to defend myself if I had a gun. Actually, that's generally incorrect, as proven by the statistic I just mentioned. How? Well, just because you have a gun does not mean that you'll be able to shoot a burglar before the burglar shoots you. What? Okay, let's say you own a gun. You're asleep one night when suddenly you hear the sound of someone breaking into your house. You rush over to your closet to get your gun where it is kept safely and securely. Suddenly, the burglar bursts through your bedroom door and into your room. He sees you reaching for your gun in the closet. Before you're able to shoot the burglar, the burglar shoots you. Pfft, I can fix that problem. How's that? I won't keep my gun in my closet. I'll sleep with my gun under my pillow. Actually, even keeping a gun under your pillow doesn't guarantee that you'll be able to protect yourself. What happens if a burglar breaks into your house while you're sound asleep? Burglars aren't necessarily noisy. They can be very quiet. What happens if someone breaks into your house at night, enters your room while you're sound asleep, puts their gun up to your head, and demands that you give them your valuables immediately? You won't have any time to react if that's the case. If you do try to react and reach for the gun under your pillow, the burglar will be able to shoot you way before your hand even touches the gun. You'll be shot instantly. Also, it's extremely unwise for you to keep a gun underneath your pillow in the first place. Why? Well, first of all, the gun could go off while you're sleeping and blow your brains out or shoot your spouse. Second of all, if you have kids, you need to keep your gun locked away safely and securely where your kids will never find them. 683 kids kill themselves every year because they find a gun in their parents' home and they accidentally shoot themselves, thinking that they're playing with a toy. For instance, a two-year-old boy named Wyatt Mateo recently shot himself through the eye with a gun he found on his father's nightstand. Wyatt's father told police that he always kept his gun on his four-foot nightstand for security purposes. Wyatt died soon after he shot himself. Similarly, two-year-old Timothy Addison shot himself in the chest with a loaded 9mm after finding the gun in his parents' couch while playing. So basically, if you have children, you must have your guns locked away in a safe and secure place. But anyway, that's beside the point. Where was I? I don't know. I stopped listening like five minutes ago. Oh yeah. So anyway, keeping a gun in your house will not keep you or your family safer. In fact, as mentioned, if you own a gun, you are 4.5 times as likely to be shot if you're ever robbed or assaulted. So what are you supposed to do if a burglar breaks into your house and you don't have a gun? Either try to escape, or if it's too late for that, simply give them what they want. What? The vast majority of burglars only break into houses because they want to steal things. Hardly any burglars want any trouble. They don't want to shoot anyone because then they would be charged for murder in addition to robbery if they were ever caught. The vast majority of burglars just want to break into a house, steal whatever they can get, and leave without harming anybody. It's only when people try to shoot them that they shoot back. So if anyone ever tries to break into your house, just give them what they want and they'll almost certainly leave you and your family unharmed. Do you have any proof of this? Absolutely. Only 3.5% of all household burglaries consist of a household member experiencing some kind of violence beyond simple assault. Judging from the information I discussed previously, it could be assumed that the vast majority of these relatively few injuries only took place because someone in the house attempted to shoot the burglar, so the burglar shot back. What's also interesting to note is that offenders are known to their victims in 65% of violent burglaries, meaning that the majority of violent burglaries take place because of unusual situations such as a divorced man breaking into his ex-wife's house to rape her. Wow, that was a lot of information! What did that even mean? It means that the chances of a complete stranger breaking into your house for the sole purpose of harming you or your family is practically non-existent. In fact, judging from the information we've just went over, I would estimate that even less than 1% of burglars ever break into houses for the sole purpose of harming a stranger. As long as you do not attempt to harm a burglar, you and your family will almost definitely survive a burglary without any injuries. So basically, you do not need to own a gun in your home to protect yourself or your family from a violent burglar because there is virtually no chance of a stranger ever breaking into your house just to harm you or your family. Owning a gun will just make it more likely that you will be shot if your house is ever robbed. Oh my gosh, you talk forever! As Captain Catholic, pfft, what I ever ask! So anyway, those are just a few reasons why you're more likely to be shot in assault if you own a gun. However, it's not only more dangerous for you to own a gun if you're ever assaulted, it's simply more dangerous for you to own a gun even if no one ever breaks into your house. 
What do you mean? Tell me what you mean, fool! Well, I already mentioned that children often find guns in their homes and accidentally shoot themselves, their siblings, or their friends. But it's not just children you have to worry about accidentally shooting someone. If you have a gun in your house, you might be the one who accidentally ends up shooting one of your family members, yourself, one of your neighbors, or even a guest in your house. Yeah, right. Like that ever happens, adults are responsible. Gun accidents do happen. In fact, over 18,000 people are accidentally shot every year in the United States. Really? Yep. That's just ridiculous. I would never shoot myself or one of my family members. I'm too responsible and too careful for that. That's what a lot of people say. But the fact is, accidents simply happen. In fact, half of all accidental shooting deaths are caused from people accidentally shooting themselves. And in virtually every case where a person accidentally shoots and kills another person, the shooter and victim knew each other. This means that when someone accidentally shoots and kills someone else, the victim is almost always a family member, a neighbor, or a guest. How could anyone possibly accidentally kill one of their own family members with a gun? Many ways. The most obvious ways consist of when people are showing a gun to a family member and they accidentally pull the trigger, or they drop the gun and the gun goes off, or when kids are playing with a gun when you're not around and they accidentally shoot one another. Also... Also what? Get to the point! You're taking forever! Also, there are many times when a gun owner accidentally mistakes their spouse or a child for a burglar. What? How could that happen? Well, let's say you unexpectedly hear a noise in the middle of the night come from downstairs. You assume that it's a burglar, so you grab your gun and head downstairs. When you get downstairs, you unexpectedly see someone moving around in the dark. So you panic, and you shoot before you even know who you're shooting. After you shot them, you turn on the lights to find out that you just shot your teenage daughter who woke up to use the bathroom. Or you just shot your son who just woke up to get a midnight snack. Wow, that would suck. Yes, it would, but it happens very often. Some gun owners are so anxious to use their guns against a burglar as if they're just waiting for some action to happen that they accidentally mistake one of the family members for a burglar. This happens all the time, and it's partly responsible for the 18,000 people who are accidentally shot every year in America. All right, all right, all right! What's your freaking point? My point is that private citizens do not protect themselves and their family members by keeping guns in their homes. Instead, keeping a gun in your house endangers your life and the lives of your family members. To sum everything up, a gun is 22 times more likely to be used in a criminal assault, criminal homicide, accidental shooting, or suicide than in a self-defense shooting. Clearly, guns hurt more people than they help. But wait a minute. Are you saying that there are never any times when private citizens use guns to defend themselves? No, I'm not saying that. There are times when a private citizen uses a gun against a burglar or an attacker and survives to tell the story. However, this actually very rarely happens. According to the FBI, there are only about 200 legally justifiable self-defense homicides by private citizens every year in the United States. There are only 200 legally justified self-defense homicides by private citizens each year in the U.S.? That's what I just said! 200? That's it? That's it. Now compare that number to how many people are killed by gun violence every year. 31,000 people die from gun violence each year, but there are only 200 legally justified self-defense homicides committed by private citizens each year. Clearly, drastically less lives would be lost if guns were eventually banned from the homes of private citizens. All right, well, I have one more question for you, Captain. Shoot! <laughs> what are private citizens supposed to do if our government suddenly becomes corrupt and turns on us? Oh, please, come on! No, seriously, man! Private citizens need to own guns because we need to be prepared to rise up and form a militia to overthrow our government if it ever becomes irredeemably corrupt! This is probably one of the most ridiculous claims made by gun lobbyists, and yet it is shoved down our throat year after year by the NRA. My concerns are not ridiculous. My concerns are awesome! Alright, let's start at the beginning. So you're saying that private citizens need to own guns because they might have to overthrow the government one day if the government ever became entirely corrupt and tried to enslave and oppress everybody. That's right! Without guns, American citizens have no way to defend themselves against a corrupt government! <laughs> Alright, to start out, what do you mean when you say that you're worried about the government becoming corrupt? You know, what if the government becomes corrupt and tries to oppress us? Well, who are you referring to when you say the government? <laughs> like my quote marks in there? They're in the air. Uh... So are you saying that you're afraid that George Bush or Barack Obama might run around with guns and rocket launchers trying to oppress everybody? Well, no, that's just silly. <laughs> For one thing, it's incredibly unlikely that the U.S. government would ever become entirely corrupt because U.S. citizens elect officials into office. Why would anyone ever elect a corrupt official into office? 
But just to continue, let's say the entire government did become entirely corrupt and wanted to oppress all of its citizens. Even in this case, the government alone does not have any way to oppress anyone. What do you mean? Members of the government are simply just a bunch of bureaucrats sitting behind desks, many of whom probably don't even know how to use a gun. They're virtually all just untrained civilians. So the government by itself can't oppress anyone. In order for a totally corrupt government to oppress anyone, the government would need to have the U.S. military on its side. Exactly! What happens if the government oppresses with the military? Then what? Then what? Again, such a situation is almost entirely unlikely. Although governments in third world countries often oppress citizens through military factions, it's highly unlikely that such a thing would ever happen in the U.S. or in other first world countries. How do you know? Because the situation in third world countries is radically different. The only reason that governments in third world countries can oppress people through the military is because there is much political instability in third world countries. For instance, third world countries have multiple political factions, and each political faction has their own personal military. So? So in third world countries, it's likely for oppression to take place because when one political party takes power, they might use their own military to kill out the military faction of a rival political party. What's your point, Captain Whitey Tighties? All right, let's compare this to the U.S. In the United States, there are two main political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans. However, the United States only has one military, and this military serves the entire country no matter which political party is in power, whether the power is in the hands of the Democrats or the Republicans. Okay. But in the third world, it's as if the Democrats have their own military and the Republicans have their own military. When the Republicans take office in a third world country, the Republicans might use their own personal military to try to kill off the Democrats' military faction as well as the Democrats' citizens in that country. Oh, I get it. Good. So in a first world country such as the United States, where there is a stable political system, it's very unlikely that a totally corrupt government would even be able to use the military to oppress its citizens because, in order to do this, the government would have to convince the entire military to oppress all citizens. There is virtually no chance of this ever happening. Why not? You're getting really annoying! Because the U.S. military consists of soldiers who are Democrats and soldiers who are Republicans. Why would a military comprised of its own citizens turn on its own citizens? Well, huh? In order for a totally corrupt government to oppress its people, the totally corrupt government would have to convince its entire military to oppress people. Why would the military oppress and kill members of their own families and communities? Hmm. Perhaps you know someone in the military. A friend, a neighbor, or maybe even a family member. Do you really think that such people would just turn around and do whatever a corrupt government tells them to do? Do you really think that such people would just slaughter your entire neighborhood because a couple of corrupt bureaucrats told them to? Um, probably not. No, of course not. There's virtually no chance of that ever happening. Alright, but what if it did happen? What if it did happen? If the military turned on us, then we'd have to be armed so we could fight back. Private citizens need to have guns so we can fight off a corrupt military controlled by the government. Yeah! All right. If such a situation really did ever occur, do you really think you're going to be able to take out the entire United States military with your puny little handgun? Um. Uh, well, uh... Even if the entire military really did become entirely corrupt, just because the totally corrupt government told them to, there is absolutely no way that private citizens could defend themselves, even if they were all armed with guns. How do you know? All right, let's say you arm every private citizen in the United States with every kind of gun that is legal for a private citizen to own. In other words, let's say you give every private citizen a handgun, an assault rifle, semi-automatic weapons, every type of gun that is currently legal for citizens to own. Even then, it would still be entirely impossible for private citizens to defeat a corrupt military. Why? Because the United States military is far too powerful. Now personally, I believe that the United States military is immorally overpowered. The United States spends far too much money on military expenditure in a world where millions of people are starving. But that's another story. The point is, the military has thousands of tanks, planes, missiles, bombs, aircraft carriers, and enough artillery to make Chuck Norris cry like a little schoolgirl or Mr. Butts on the first day of school because you dropped your hair right to the toilet! Oh, I don't want to see Chuck Norris cry. And if it really comes down to it, the United States military has nuclear, chemical, 
biological weapons, and other weapons of mass destruction at its fingertips. Do you really think that your tiny, insignificant little pistols and semi-automatic rifles can compete with all of that? Uh... Well, you could arm every private citizen in your entire city with every type of weapon that is currently legal, and all the military would have to do to defeat you is sit back from hundreds of miles away, press a few buttons to launch guided missiles to the exact location of your city to blow the whole thing away. The weapons that are currently legal for citizens to possess would never be able to shoot out the original sources of the military missiles that can be launched from hundreds of miles away from an aircraft carrier or from an airplane or from a remote ground location. And the guns that are legal today could never shoot out the lightning-fast missiles themselves. Well, so... So even if the government did become entirely corrupt and convinced the entire military to turn against its own communities, there is still no way that private citizens could ever defeat the insanely overarmed force that is the United States military. So basically, the argument that a private citizen needs to own guns to defend themselves against a corrupt government is completely meaningless and absurd because a private citizen's guns would never in a million years be able to compete with a first world country's military. Yeah, I'm gonna give you that one. Thanks! Fantastic! But, I still don't see the point of banning guns from the homes of private citizens. What's that gonna do? The point is that banning guns from the homes of private citizens will eventually make it virtually impossible for criminals to ever obtain guns. How's that? As I previously mentioned, virtually every criminal obtains their guns from a legal source. Even if a criminal got their gun from the black market, that gun initially came from a legal source. The gun came from a manufacturer who gave it to a distributor who gave it to a gun store, who sold it to a citizen who sold it to a criminal. Yeah. So if we ban guns from private citizens, there would be no gun stores. If there are no gun stores, where are criminals going to get guns? Um, the black market! No, that would be impossible because there would be no black market. Without guns being sold at gun stores and gun shows, there would be no way for anyone to get a gun, and so there would be no way for anyone to put a gun on the black market. Oh, I see. If private citizens are banned from owning guns, no one will be able to obtain guns because there will be nowhere to obtain guns from. The black market would essentially cease to exist. If only the police, security guards, and military forces possess guns, then the world would be a much safer place. Wait a minute. What? If you ban guns immediately, then private citizens would be unarmed, but criminals would all still have their guns. Yes, that's why I said guns should eventually be banned from the homes of private citizens. For the time being, very strict gun control policy should be placed on the production, sale, importation, and exportation of arms. This would help to keep guns out of the hands of criminals, but this alone wouldn't entirely solve the problem. So to solve the problem, after many, many years or even decades of strict gun control policies, the government must phase out production of guns for private citizens, and then develop methods for collecting and destroying guns. Eventually, after careful planning, guns would be virtually wiped out from the hands of private citizens and criminals alike. But what about other countries? If we ban guns in the U.S., criminals could just get guns from other countries where they're still legal. Nope, not if guns are illegal in other countries. What? That's why this is a complex process that will take time, but is nevertheless very possible. The United Nations is already working towards having strict gun control policies in every country throughout the world. After encouraging and implementing strict gun control policies, the entire world would eventually be able to go through all the phases I just described, and a gun-oriented black market would essentially cease to exist. Only a plan such as this will create the safest society possible. All right, all right, all right, one last question. I promise this is the last one. If you're Catholic and you want strict gun control, and if the Catholic Church promotes strict gun control, then why are so many other Christians of other denominations obsessed with guns? This is a question I have myself as well. Personally, I hate guns. I can't stand the sight or thought of them. And while there's certainly nothing wrong with hunting or target shooting, I find it very disturbing that many American Christians are obsessed with guns themselves. This is a major problem, and such an attitude contradicts everything Christ ever stood for, because the fact is, guns are so closely tied in with the culture of death. Small arms such as guns are not only responsible for the deaths of 31,000 Americans every year, but small arms such as guns are responsible for approximately 500,000 deaths worldwide each and every year. 
I have not even begun to discuss the atrocities that guns cause worldwide. I have not even touched upon the hundreds of thousands of lives that are taken away each year worldwide in mass genocides, in farm wars in poor countries, and the oppression that is brought upon entire peoples simply because of the existence of guns, and the fact that profit-hungry gun companies wish to export their weapons to other countries to fuel civil conflicts all for love of money. As I have already mentioned, Pope John Paul II has referred to guns as instruments of death. I can't see any reason why a Christian would want to be so closely attached to something that is literally an instrument of death. After all, that's what guns are for, killing. Christ himself told us that when someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. And yet we see so many American Christians fighting for the so-called right to own unnecessary massive assault weapons and armor-piercing cop killer bullets. I certainly do not mean offense to anyone, and I am certainly not judging anyone or calling anyone a bad person or a bad Christian, but many non-Christians are utterly disillusioned from Christianity when they see members of a religion that supposedly promotes peace and love spend so much time obsessing over instruments of death. I'm simply challenging those Christians who strive to be good examples of Christ. A truly Christian attitude would never involve an obsession with guns, and anyone who is truly committed to promoting a world of peace, justice, and love would never be so personally preoccupied with guns themselves and would never spend so much time and energy fighting for the so-called right to own a gun in a world that is so clearly marked and scarred by gun violence. Catholics, other Christians, and all people of goodwill need to come together to promote a world in which all people can live safely and without the fear of a loved one being murdered by gun violence. As the Vatican has stated, it is absolutely urgent for society to take the steps necessary to implement strict gun control so that guns may eventually be eradicated from our world. Only then will the hope of a more peaceful world begin to become a reality.